takes you one step ahead. Jersey Central with Burt Barron on the new Talk Radio 1450 WCTC. It is 837. We're back on Jersey Central here on WCTC 732-545-9282. We have our need-to-know things coming up a little bit later on in this half hour, including a rather interesting parking dispute in a town in Jersey. Listen, I know parking is tough everywhere. But this got way out of hand. I'll talk about something that happened, uh, an event, uh, an incident rather, in a central New Jersey town over parking. Wow. (laughs) I'll give you all the info on that coming up. I have a special guest who's going to join me now on the Miller Lite Jersey Central Newsmaker Hotline. I received the prestigious award, the 2018 Mel Narrell Award. It was presented by the New Jersey State Bar Association at their annual convention that happened in Atlantic City back in May. And my guest is with me here to talk about a couple of issues that he's involved with and some pretty pressing things that are happening here in New Jersey. Uh, so let's welcome uh, our special guest, Thomas uh, Prohl, who was with us here uh, on WCTC. Thomas, good morning. It's Burt Bear, and welcome to w- WCTC Radio. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Good morning, Burt. Thanks for having me on. My pleasure. And uh, congratulations to you on receiving this rather prestigious award earlier in 2018. Uh, some of the things that, that you're involved with uh, when it comes to things like um, how about equal rights uh, here in New Jersey? W- where are we when it comes to something like that uh, in our state, Thomas? We have some work ahead of us to to make this uh, a little bit more uh, fair and equitable for everybody. Yeah, we are. You know, um, I served as the president of the state bar uh, last year and uh, finished my term, but uh, I helped form an organization called Garden State Equality, which is the leading LGBT rights organization. Sure, sure. Know it well. Sure. So we do a lot of work around the state, particularly on anti-bullying issues and equality issues. Um, And also, when I was state bar president, I championed the Equal Rights Amendment to the federal constitution, which you may recall got some traction back in the 70s, um, but it never sort of popped the bubble in terms of getting ratified by 38 states. We're actually up to 37 states as of a few weeks ago. Illinois finally adopted it uh, after Nevada. So um, it's pretty close, and, you know, I've been pushing that on a national level. But statewide, you know, we have Garden State Equality does a lot of work in the schools and does a lot of anti-bullying work with them, but also just issues of um, transgender equality and civil rights for LGBT citizens. Are are you comfortable with the direction that our state is moving when it comes to uh, a few things you mentioned there, transgender rights? Uh, anti-bullying initiatives. Uh, Are we kind of moving in the right direction with this, Thomas? Yeah, I think so. You know, and the issue with anti-bullying is the kids in schools. You know, there's um, there's a difference between normal childhood teasing and what is this sort of pack mentality with kids attacking one particular kid based on a characteristic. And it's not just LGBT. It could be their weight or their race or some other factors. And, you know, it's this critical time in a kid's formation as an adult as they're growing up. And what we try to do, the law actually seeks to do, is sort of interrupt any sort of that pack mentality where kids' psyches are attacked and they're sort of belittled and humiliated. And we sort of get in there. And what the law in New Jersey says is that we're a school district. Anyone, even someone, you know, doing it, working in the cafeteria, if they observe an incident of harassment, intimidation, or bullying, they have to report that. And when they report that, the school district is required to do an investigation. They have to complete that within 10 days. And here's the great thing for school districts is if they perform all they have to do under that statute, if they come to a conclusion, render a decision, and they deal with that bullying incident, the school district is rewarded under the law with immunity. They get immunity from a civil lawsuit in that law. Um, But at the same time, what it does is it helps that kid. It interrupts and sort of addresses the issue um, of that bullying that goes on and sort of uh, gets in the middle of that and resolves that issue so the kid doesn't have that ongoing. Because what happened years ago is historically you'd have kids sort of gang up and and just attack mercilessly with a kid over a course of months. And there's a famous case in New Jersey, L.W. v. Tom's River, where this one kid went through years and years of this ridicule and humiliation and kids attacking them. And so what this law is designed to do is sort of interrupt that, get in the middle of that, prevent that, and allow kids just to be kids in the school district. Yeah. If the 10 days comes and goes, uh, Thomas, where there's no investigation or there's no action taken by the school district, can the state then get involved? Has that happened where the state uh, kind of uh, visits a school district or visits uh, a school board and, and does their own investigation? 
Yeah, so in New Jersey, we actually have a division on civil rights. Okay. You can make a report to them, and they come in, and they can get involved. They have investigators, and they do that sort of work there. So, yeah, if, if the school district basically sits back and does nothing, then there are governmental agencies and people that get involved, and I think the DCR, Division on Civil Rights, is the chief one. Interestingly, um, there's a, they're a good group. They're very proactive, and, and the guy that was running that with um, – Governor Christie is actually, Governor Murphy reappointed him because he's doing such a good job, but they actually send out their investigators. They'll get involved with the school district. And the other thing, we at the State Bar, we have a foundation. We actually, for three decades, we've been going into schools and educating the educators and the school personnel on what is bullying. So we actually come in, we do free trainings. Um, they come down to the Law Center in New Brunswick, and, and we bring in, I mean, thousands of people through the years have come through this program. And we do it for free. Um, we educate them. Same with Garden State Equality. A lot of groups out there um, do a lot of education of school personnel just for free. Um, allow them um, to understand what it is this is so they can be involved in that process to better educate the kid. Well, you wear several hats, uh, uh, Thomas, no doubt about it. And uh, you even have some work where you're involved with renewable energy efforts uh, here in New Jersey. Uh, talk about where we stand with that, and, and let me just say that I, I love the idea that fracking is outlawed in I st- our state because I see no upside to that whatsoever. But talk about I'm your, right your with you. thank you. Yeah. Talk about uh, your work with renewable energy, if you would. Yeah, so I'm an environmental lawyer by trade. That's what I do. Um, I represent the Sussex County landfill. I do the environmental enforcement for Sussex County. Uh, you know, and they're very proactive up there at the landfill. We actually have a methane gas to energy facility. What you may know is that. Um, uh, greenhouse gases like methane are really potent in the atmosphere. They trap energy in our atmosphere and cause it to heat up a little bit. So methane is like 23 times more potent than carbon dioxide. So um, as the waste decomposes in the landfill, we we suck that out. We actually have active uh, system in there. We pull it out. We burn it. We turn it into renewable energy, and that powers houses in the area. So it's actually a nice thing. We take a greenhouse gas that otherwise we go up into the atmosphere mm-hmm. and we burn it up, turn it into a renewable energy source. And so what you see in particular with Governor Murphy, like he issued this Executive Order 7 on January 29th. It wasn't even two weeks into his term. And he just laid out the groundwork. He's got a very sort of ambitious environmental agenda. And he's put us back into the Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative, which allows us access to carbon trading markets and some other stuff. I know my landfill, actually, we got like $300,000 off the carbon market years ago before Governor Christie pulled us out of it. But, you know, it's an ambitious uh, agenda that he's laid out. And and it's a 10-state pack, so it's a regional pack up and down the uh, northeast region here. Ten states are getting together, and they're determining that they want to control and limit pollution in the air through REGI, or GGI, Regional yep. Greenhouse Gas Initiative. So that laid out a very ambitious uh, agenda, and you see DEP is taking some other action. Um, some of it I like, some of it I don't like, really. But, um, you know, they're very um, sort of hitting the ground running in terms of environmental issues. Um, so, But it remains to be seen on a lot of what they're going to do. But in particular, right out the gate, it's all about air pollution and controlling what's being released into the atmosphere. Gotcha. And something I thought I'd never find myself asking an attorney, why do you have such a love for a particular Dr. Seuss book? Talk about that. Uh, <laughs> so um, I was the president of the environmental group down in uh, my college, and so um, they were going to clear a forest out to build a hotel and retreat center. So with that, we started this thing, Gorilla Theater, and we went around and we acted out the Lorax. And so <laughs> I okay. went around, I, I, and so uh, since then, you know, quite a few years ago, but I could still recite it. I am the Lorax, I speak for the trees, which you seem to be chopping as fast as you please. I'm also in charge of the brown barbaloot, frisking about in their barbaloot suits. Now, thanks to your hacking the trees to the ground, there's not enough truffula fruit to go around. The poor barbaloots are all getting the crummies because they have gas and no food in their tummies. Mystery <laughs> said with a sawdusty sneeze, I'm the Lorax, I speak for the trees. I speak for the trees, for the trees have no tongues, and I'm asking you, sir, at the top of my lungs. He's very upset as he shouted and puffed. What's that thing you've made out of my truffula top? So awesome. I fancy myself the Lorax. You know, I'm out there advocating for some people who don't have the ability to stand up and speak out for themselves. I do it for the trees as well, but, you know, it's how oh, I see my role in the world as an attorney. Yeah, have you ever recited that before a judge, and uh, what, what would the reaction be, I wonder, if you broke into some Dr. Seuss in, in a courtroom? I wonder. 
I haven't tried it in a courtroom. Yeah, I'm okay. Me, I've gotten a couple of awards. <laughs> I've, I've mentioned it there. It gets, a, it gets quite a laugh. From excellent, me. excellent sure. stuff. Uh, Tom Prohl, where can someone contact you and, and find out more about all this work that you're doing? It's, it's so many different things that you're involved in with our state. Where can someone reach out to you to, to talk more about these things? Well, I'm at Laddie Clark and Ryan. I'm a partner at that law firm. It's in Sparta, New Jersey, and uh, you just Google that, Laddie Clark and Ryan, and I'm also at Garden State of Quality, so I'm, I've been on their executive committee, and I've been there since 2005 when we started it. It's a great organization. So. All right. Excellent. Thomas Prohl, great to speak with you today, and thank you for all the great work you're doing in our state, and I, I really appreciate it. All right? Thank you, Bert. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you. All right. Thomas Prohl uh, here on the Miller.